Final update to my 37 male wife's 34 female sister, 29 female, tried to kiss me and now my wife is spiraling. Help me. If you haven't watched the first part of the story yet, click the card above or the link in the description. Now the second slash final update. So I guess my original posts got reposted onto TikTok and some other subs here on Reddit. So I've been getting tons of messages asking for updates. It feels like things are mostly settled, and I'm really hoping this will be my final update. First, I want to say that I've gotten so many questions about who Mary is, and I'm just not going to say. Suffice it to say that she's never been household name famous, but she made a living solely on modeling for about a decade from what I understand, so she must have been popular enough that fashion people might know her. I really don't know how that world works, but in my opinion, it doesn't matter how many names you drop. You're not famous if you don't have a Wikipedia page. Here's the actual update. My wife loved Getaway Weekend. We had a blast, and by the end of it, she said she felt like herself again. For a few days after we got back, things were really quiet, so we were hopeful that Mary had finally given up, but I felt uneasy about it all. Many of you warned me that Mary would try to interfere with my work, and while I initially dismissed it, I figured I would reach out to my boss just in case. I've been working at the same company for almost 10 years, and she's heard me vent about Mary before, so I didn't have to explain too much. My boss just reassured me that she knows my real character and would let me know if Mary tried anything. Well, as you predicted, Mary did try to contact my boss a couple of days later, and the following is a recounting of what my boss told me. Apparently, Mary said that I needed to be fired because I was a predator and claimed to have proof that I assaulted her. My boss said that was a very serious accusation to make and asked Mary to explain what proof she had. Mary claimed there was a camera that caught the whole incident, and my boss asked her to send a video. Then Mary got flustered and said the police had it, so my boss asked her to send over a copy of the police report. Then Mary said it had a lot of private information in it, so my boss asked her to redact the private information and send it over. Then Mary said she didn't feel comfortable with that, and my boss told her that she could not take action against an employee based on word of mouth from a stranger. Then Mary shouted at her about victim blaming and hung up. Unfortunately, that was not the end of it. Last Wednesday, Mary somehow sent an email from my personal email account with a D-pick, that's not mine obviously, to the entire office. My best guess is that I must have left my email logged in on one of my in-laws devices. She's definitely not smart enough to actually hack me. But I know this is completely besides the point, but of course she chose the weirdest looking junk I've ever seen. I played team sports all my life, so I've seen a lot of junks, and this was something else. It's honestly kind of funny to think about Mary googling gross peens or something and sifting through hundreds of images to find just the right one. I had to apologize to everyone on staff. And thankfully, folks were surprisingly understanding. It's actually been a kind of nice bonding experience with my co-workers. I honestly didn't consider myself to be super well-liked in the office, but it feels like everyone has been going out of their way to be kind to me, and it means a lot. Anyway, at this point, it was clear we had to escalate things legally. I really wanted to avoid it, but she forced my hand. My wife and I have a lawyer friend who helped us draft a cease and desist letter outlining her continued harassment and the material and emotional damage this is causing us. My wife then sent a message to Mary and my in-laws with a copy of the letter and made it very clear that we would pursue criminal and or civil proceedings if her harassment continued. My wife's mom then called her crying and begged her to just let it go and leave Mary alone. My wife calmly explained that Mary's the only person responsible for this whole situation and that they the parents have always enabled her awful behavior. She also said something she later regretted, but I think was pretty awesome. Mary's going to stick you two in a nursing home and steal your money the minute she has the chance. And you deserve it. After the way her mom reacted, my wife is firmly settled on cutting off her family completely. This happened on Friday, and on Sunday, Mary's best friend me, Anne, sent my brother a message on Facebook to say Mary is going to leave us alone and to please not sue her. I told my brother not to respond, then just sat and enjoyed the idea that Mary was out there somewhere freaking out about the potential of having to actually face the consequences of her actions. It must be such a strange feeling for her. Since then, we haven't heard a peep from the grapevine. It feels like things are finally starting to go back to normal. My wife is starting therapy next week and will be starting couples therapy in a month or two. She wants to do some work on herself first. 
She's also taking a short leave from work to rest and recharge. I'm so proud of her for standing up for herself with her family and finally putting her mental health and well-being first. Thanks again for everyone who offered advice. This was a messy situation, but it definitely would have been messier without your help. Oh, I wish I could see the mother's face when his wife dropped the nursing home line. I bet they always assumed Jenna was going to take care of them when they got old. With a scapegoat slash golden child parenting style, for some reason, the scapegoat is always the one expected to take care of the family. Well, of course, they wouldn't want to impose on a golden child. And after all, scapegoat can afford it. The saddest thing is that the scapegoat usually complies. They are often guilted into it, or have the misguided notion that if they do this, then their parent will finally show their love for them. But it's never forthcoming, and nothing changes other than the narcissistic parents get worse. But by then, the scapegoat is so worn down they just accept it, while the golden child carries on like normal with their normal lives, and the scapegoat is a slave who has lost all self-esteem. Then the parents leave everything to the golden child in their will. There is absolutely no way this is the end of it. She's going to eventually assume that Opie not suing her is the green light she needs to continue to pull the crap that she always has once the heat wears down. When she does something stupid next time, I really, really genuinely hope that both Opie and his wife go beyond just scorched earth to full nuclear wasteland earth on her. She needs to be taught a lesson the hard way with actual consequences, not just threats. That's like parents that constantly say that they're going to turn the car around and put their kid in timeout and then never follow through. I get why they don't want to pursue legal action currently, especially considering that she hasn't done anything since decease and desist. But when she does cross the line again, I hope they take her down hard. I really, really do. People like her who make false accusations and especially pull that stunt with the email photo only do it because they don't fear consequences, because they've never been punished once in their life. Screw her parents for making her into that little goblin troll of a woman. Okay, Mary's craptacular to the extreme, but wow, those parents are just as bad. She clearly thinks she has no worth beyond her looks, and her parents are just trash. Poor Opie. Holy heck. And poor Jenna. My goodness. The boss is the MVP in my book. Went down every avenue with Mary and cut her down short. We should all be so fortunate to have a boss stand up for us like this. I did like reading that part. I laughed when she mentioned victim blaming. She is the predator, and she is literally blaming the actual victim. Oh, and trying to frame him too. They are absolutely willing to do this if desperate enough. During my last breakup, my entire family got an email that I was about to be exposed. Nothing ever came of it. However, he got his exposure when I finally could take my proof of recurring harassment from him sending threatening messages showing up to my job and leaving messages on my car to finally get him to knock it all off. The best part was that my friends told me to block him from contacting me on phone slash social slash email and my instincts said, no matter how down or lonely or angry those messages make you feel, those messages might be needed in the future. So he went on mute and I gather evidence. Not a single person ever believed him luckily. Last story. A mighty a-hole for not wishing my mom a happy birthday and then not letting her come to our house? I, 25 male, have a wife, 24 female. We'll call her Amelia. Amelia and I got married two years ago, coming up to three years in June. We have recently just had our first baby, a beautiful baby girl. My mom never was a huge fan of my wife for reasons I will never know, but I don't care as I love Amelia so much and I've had to defend her against my mom multiple times. My wife's labor lasted much longer than we expected. She started on Thursday evening and delivered our baby on Monday during the very early hours of the morning. As you can imagine, it was a long process, and she was exhausted, and so was I as I wasn't sleeping unless she was asleep. My mom's birthday was on Saturday, and she had a whole party planned out. Amelia at this point was in awful pain very consistently. That means I was constantly by her side doing whatever she needed me to do. Meaning that Friday night, we got no sleep. So when Saturday came around, we both were fighting to sleep and could barely stay awake. Because of this, I just completely forgot it was my mom's birthday. As I don't really look much at my phone. And if I did, it would be for entertainment for my wife and I together. We both agreed beforehand that when the time came, we would send the initial text that the baby was coming. But that would be it and we wouldn't respond to any other text until after. Well, my baby girl was finally born, and we announced it to our family. 
that I got to reply to my messages from the past few days, and that's when I saw my mom text about it being her birthday, and she sent a few more after expressing her anger for me not getting in contact. So I called her up apologizing but explaining that I genuinely forgot, and it wasn't intentional. She went on to blame my wife by saying she purposely went into labor right around her birthday in order to steal her spotlight from her son, which I found really weird to say. From this comment alone, I got annoyed and just told her to leave me and my wife alone, and that she isn't welcome to our house for the next few days. She can wait till she's over her fit to see her granddaughter. My whole family have been calling me an a-hole for this, and that I'm a bad son for not remembering my mom's birthday but that I'm an even worse son for not letting her meet her grandbaby. It's annoying because all we want to do is enjoy our new baby together, just the two of us without anyone being a bother. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. It's cute that your mom thinks your wife is talented enough to go into labor on command. It's bizarre that you're the only person in your family who realizes the world doesn't revolve around your mom. Keep to your boundaries, daddy. And congratulations. I mean, I know my wife's amazing at all, but she isn't that talented to go into labor on command. But thank you so much. She sounds so super lucky to have such a loving man. Not day hole. Your mom should have understood when you told her you were with your wife in labor, not been griping and accusing. Tell slash message your mom that after how she stupidly insulted your wife and specify that she accused your wife of choosing to go into labor to damage mom's birthday party. You will need an apology from her to your wife in person, and on social media. And CC that request to all the family. I love your attitude towards this situation. The public apology in socials, lol. Or you can apologize to her publicly. I am so sorry that I forgot to text you happy birthday. While we were at a hospital and my wife was in active labor. I'm so sorry that it wasn't the first thing on my mind when our baby finally arrived. I'm sorry that my forgetfulness caused you to have to call and text me multiple times to remind me about your adult birthday as we were in the hospital and that you had to suggest your own makeup birthday present. I'm sorry that your own extreme reaction has made it so that I'm not comfortable with you being around my child yet. Not day whole, but turn off your phone. You don't need to take that from anyone, family or not. I'm really tempted to do that. Make your WhatsApp status something like, We are alive and good, phones turned off while settling with our newborn. And just do it. That's a good idea. And now for the update. Hi, firstly, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for your advice. And it really made me realize how serious the situation is. I took the advice and decided to post an Instagram and Facebook post before my mom got a chance to. In the post, I mentioned what my wife went through and purposely left in that she would never want to forcefully go through that, just to make it clear to my mom and family what the truth is. We announced that, whilst we soak up our newborn, that uninvited guests won't be allowed into our home, so please respect our privacy as we take time as a new family. This worked, and I got a lot of friends and even some family commenting their congrats to us. My mom has since asked when can she see her granddaughter, and we have just said that she will see her when she fixes her attitude towards my wife as my baby won't grow up to see her mother treated like she's nothing. Also, the fact that my wife never deserved to be hated in the first place. We are going no contact for now, and are as happy as we could ever be with our new baby girl. About my family, we have sent them a message with a full story and now they feel really awful about everything. Originally, my mom told them that my wife got induced, and that she took some medicine to slow down the labor. I don't even know that medication exists, because apparently that's what I said on the phone, which is obviously not the truth, and my mom started claiming I did that to compete with her. My sisters are only young and didn't question my mom, but now they have been nothing but supportive. That being said though, I still have my guard up for now, just in case. Thank you again for your advice, and all your kind words to me and my wife. We really appreciate it. Saying she purposely went into labor right around her birthday in order to steal her spotlight. Don't need to read another word. Mom is a freaking lunatic. The took medication to prolong her labor was the icing on a crazy cake. You would think someone who delivered seven of her own babies would know no one would ever want their labor to be longer. But here we are. Good update. Glad that they are working as a couple to build their new family filled with positivity and not toxic negativity. Entitled people never tell the whole truth and often lie, either outright or by omission, to garner sympathy and create a victim mentality. 
That woman should never be called grandma by any child. She is cruel and unkind. My own grandma is like this. I only hated her, and my parents even more for subjecting us to her in the name of family. Hell, I forgot to wish my mom happy birthday while preparing for my exams. She didn't kick up a fuss and was more interested to hear how my studying was going. I can't imagine being upset at anyone for forgetting my birthday, especially if they literally just gave birth. How self-centered do you have to be to be more upset about a missed birthday and think an agonizing birth was planned and timed to make someone miss it instead of being excited and relieved that all involved in the birth came out of it, okay? Just pathetic. And this guy apologized. Poor guy. She's had tons of birthdays, but only one call to hear that her son has a new baby. I'd be amazed if this mom can drive, since that requires taking her eyes off of herself. I missed my own birthday party because my sister-in-law went into labor, and she and my brother wanted me there for support. Nephew was born in the wee hours of the morning, and we just missed having the same birthday by a few hours. I did it gladly, and I'd do it again in a heartbeat.